Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. As you matter story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Humana Story Live's Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 48. I am joined by Calamity Jane and Wild Bill. And if you'd like to join in on the conversation as well, simply log into our Humana Story Live thread and give us your best shot. If they're good, I'll read them on the air. And if they're bad, Calamity Jane and Wild Bill will be more than happy to read them on the air. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story community members from around the world. Who knows who will be next? Today we have Buffalo Sergeant and Doug Holiday. And we have Annie Oakley. So hopefully you guys are all ready. I wouldn't make it a habit calling me that, son. And if you can't find the show, you're probably using a pistol in the OK Corral somewhere off. Okay, so I have to ask. Hold on a second. Okay, so Christina. Yes. How is the OK Corral off grid? <laughs> I was trying to stick with a Western theme here, you know? Okay, well, whatever. I'm not doing it. Okay, so. If you guys can use your Twitter, you guys can comment Humana Story. Okay, so we're just going to dive right on in because I have a lot to cover and a little time to cover it. So I'm going to bring everybody in. Okay, so here's how it works. The theme of the day was donated by Doug Clevenger. Clevenger, Cleven, he, you know what? I don't really care anymore. And <laughs> Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I know. <laughs> okay, it's Clevenger, it's like Clevenger, this. right? Clevenger, right? It's Clevenger. Yeah, Clevenger. Clevenger. All right, and so the theme is geoengineering. Today's Fantastic Friday number 10, Flat Friday number 10. And the question of the day, is silence a form of betrayal? And he has something to say about that. So Americans are refusing to stand up against the tyrannical government forces its own people to purchase insurance that would they would not use themselves. The same government hides geoengineering by claiming the trails in the sky come from condensation. He's urging America to wake up, look up and realize we are being poisoned. There comes a time when silence becomes betrayal. And I had a question, and it relates to Flat Earth. Does geoengineering have anything to do with the enclosed world? And I like that term so much better. And if so, what and why? So this question is first going to be directed to Buffalo Sergeant. But before I get there, I have some comments, by the way, from your channel and mine. and not Patricia's yet because she's going to put this show on her channel too and then I'll get all kinds of comments and dig through them all next week. So, Synthetic Dread on Mark Sargent's page says, Hey guys, I enjoy these little get-togethers. I think the questions depend on what rabbit hole you jump down. I see two options. You can go down the PSYOPs, false flags path, or you can look at more approachable lies. We are taught in school, like dinosaurs, humans, fossil records, space travel, the globe model. Absorbing all of them at once might be dangerous for the human psyche, but waiting slowly 
you should be okay. Peace and love. And I have a few more, but Christina's going to read them. There is one from Isa Isa on Mark Sargent's page. Aren't those pendulums running on a battery pack or electricity in order to keep it running? Museum in Houston has one, and I was told that they really don't work and are not accurate. Hmm. There's another from Simon Padalero. When you say giants, what do you think about Jack and the Beanstalk and David and Goliath? Do you think any of those are true or just stories that people have left the dome? And from Flat Earther. All you have to do to prove the curvature is go to Chicago Skyline Mirage and then go to Chicago Skyline Time Lapse. The second video totally debunks the first one and prove that the world is flat. And from Flat Earth Vancouver, BC, I'm so paranoid I got a bunker. Okay, so. (laughs) I like that last one. (laughs) That was good. (laughs) Okay, so uh, let's... (laughs) Uh, let's get, well, I guess you can answer the first question. I don't even know if it's a question. I think it's a statement. He was just telling you, you guys are doing a good job. And sure. you guys really are doing a good job. I want to say you guys are awesome and hurry the f*** on. Oh, oh, damn it. Now I got to bleep that. Oh, that <laughs> Falafel guy is going to be all pissed off at me. Really? Okay. Yeah, I have to beep it out. I told him <laughs> I would. Okay, so... Uh, Let's, uh, aren't those pendulums running on a battery pack or electricity? I mean, in order to keep them running. Because remember, see, I said pendulum. You you did. Mark. Uh, is the, are, you, are, the, are the folk called pendulums running on battery power? Is yeah. The do they is? run on battery power? I don't think they do. Do they? I they do? don't think so. I don't know how it swings uniformly. Basically, does it, oh, I, I see what he's asking. Um, how can it keep swinging? Because eventually the energy is going to run out. Uh, and it's it's gonna you know the the paths are gonna be shorter and shorter, and then it's just gonna run out of gas like anything. So it's yeah, you're right. It's it's round. It's, it's hooked up to something. I just don't know what it is. That's a good question. Mm. I don't know, but something. And I yes. live in Houston, so I should go see the one that's here. I know that they s- started being made in the 1800s, and they were for some sort of World's Fair exhibit. So, I mean, it's probably tied. You know, like a like a clock pendulum is set to a spring. So maybe it's something as simple as that. I mean, it can't run forever, obviously, because that would be free energy. Magnets. I, there's a magnet at the top, I think. Yeah, but I don't know if that's going to run it forever. Yeah, probably got, a, got, me probably got a wind-up thing. You just wind it up. It probably is. But anyway, sorry. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. So Simon Pandolero, he says, when you say giants, and that's actually a good question. Because I know that he's he's either being sarcastic or joking around, but then I got to thinking about it. When you say giants... It, what do you think about Jack and the Beanstalk and David and Goliath? And do you think any of those are true or do you think they're just stories? Not Jack and the Beanstalk necessarily, but David and Goliath. Oh, yeah, you, you bet I do. Because that's you know, King David and you know his son Solomon, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe the story that I, in fact, I even did a show on it where I said that the signet of Solomon, which is known as you know the ring of power. <laughs> which I firmly believe the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy was based <laughs> off of, was uh, initially David's. Because I don't think that he just slew a guy that was much, much taller than, let's say it was eight, nine feet or whatever it was, you know, the last of the descendants of of the Nephilim, that uh, he did it with just his own bare hands and a slingshot. Nah, I think that he had a little help. And if that was a ring of power, then that's what it was. But yeah, I do believe in giants. You bet. Do we have we found any skeletons? Have they been suppressed? Yeah, maybe. But I, I believe in genetic engineering and and uh, older species. You know, I mean, look look at all the variations we have of ourselves. We have you know very small you know pygmies. They're out there, dwarves. You know, and to to them we're giants. Remember when we went into uh, Vietnam? We were called the Jolly Green Giants because we were quite a bit taller than the indigenous population. So yeah, that's my answer. I do know that uh, Northern Europe, they had an ancient belief about a big tree. It was like a world tree. It connected heaven and earth. And so that's part of the beanstalk. The biblical story of Jonah and the whale at the very end uh, resting against a gourd. So there's, there, there are aspects to the Bible and to ancient mythologies that are connected to Jack and the Beanstalk. And Jack and the Beanstalk, in a way, is kind of in a way like the Tower of Babel. 
kind of, kind something of. that's reaching to the heavens. So I think all of these things, maybe they are stories, but they all have uh, something basic to the human condition at their root. Similar roots, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, I see, I see what you're doing there. Yeah, see, beanstalk, root. Oh, my. <laughs> really? Really? We're going to go down that road. <laughs> okay, so, hey, Doug, we can hear your vapor thing going. <laughs> We yes, can hear your so. vapor thing going, so mute it when you vape. I wondered what that was. We're smoking oh, weed while we do that, this. Huh? <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was a sucking noise, and I didn't think oh. Mark and I were doing too badly. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> sucking noise. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> sorry. I can't smoking that red hair. <laughs> I can't believe you guys can hear that. I'm sorry. I won't do it no more. <laughs> it's a sensitive microphone you got. Yeah. It's right in his face. Am I loud? Am I no, too loud? No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Okay, so oh, let's move on to the question. Of the day is silence. Well, actually, that's the next segment. Sorry, I can't talk about that. Right now. <clears throat> I'll get yelled at by Ifollable, Ifollable, whatever his name is. I don't want to cuss anymore because it's hard to bleep everything. Um, <laughs> okay, so let me ask you: Does geoengineering have anything to do with uh, the enclosed world? Is this now, Mark and I have talked me? about this before a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Uh I yes, of course it does. If you're if if it's an enclosed world, if the if the world is engineered, then yes, the the people or beings inside it would absolutely be engineered to a certain degree. I mean, yeah, it's 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 a limit to what think of what we do with and I, I don't wanna sound too creepy but think of what we do on a smaller scale we when we do uh, you know giant terrariums on our side you know we we do genetic manipulation now so why wouldn't we be part of that and it seems too obvious anyway because we're so susceptible to illusion we we've got such uh visual uh problems you know detecting that sort of thing that yeah i think not only not only was the structure built but i think we were engineered to be in this specific structure and with the uh, geoengineering, like chemtrails and those sorts of things, what those planes are actually spraying, is it poison? Is it a way to control the atmosphere? Is it a way to shield us p- potentially from the positive effects of the sun, uh, which is uh, a lot of people think staring at the sun is bad, but there's sun gazing, which is really good for the human body. Maybe that has something to do with if there's a dome, maintaining the dome, or maybe the powers that should not be are using geoengineering to break a hole through the dome. Um, there's so many aspects of geoengineering. We don't really know what they're spraying. Some people have said that there are elements, aluminum and et cetera, and then more gelins yes. disease and or more gallons, excuse me, disease. So um, what what are they spraying? We don't know. Does it have a, right. a place here on the flat earth? Yes. Uh, but we don't really know what that place is because we don't know what they're doing. I've even theorized that they're spraying it in the sky for some sort of Project Blue Beam like uh, screen being formed so they can fake the International Space Station flying by. But that's just a theory. It sounds crazy, but hey. It's um, a good theory. The whole idea right. of chemtrails is crazy. Right. According to Dane Wigington, he's, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he's been, yes. yeah, he's, uh, he's got a great website. And according to him, he's, they've been spraying since the 40s. And that really blew my mind. I mean, wow, you know, that's some time. But it's, it's a, a reflection that supposedly they claim they're reflecting the sun back up to stop global warming. Okay, but he also has found barium salts and an endless amount of chemicals that uh, directly leads to Alzheimer's. And uh, okay, I, I got to cut you off here because we're getting ready to go on a break here. Okay, so hold that thought. Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. (laughs) 
All right, welcome back to segment number two of episode number 48, and it is Fantastic Friday number 10. And it also is Flat Friday number 10, and, you know, this list is just going to get longer and longer. So Doug was in the middle of telling us that he likes prank furly panties and uh, that he wears a teddy to bed. Wrong color. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, it's right. It wrong pink. color. No, I think it was black. I don't remember. And Mark Sargent, you were wonderful. And uh, okay, so go ahead and uh, the show what takes you were a saying. creepy turn. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Let's just dun, dun, continue dun. the topic. Here. It had to be my panties, huh? We were All talking right. about geoengineering, I think something. Yeah, fun, something like that. Then lingerie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what were you saying there, Doug? I was saying that uh, Dane Wigington. His team has found and proves that there's aluminum in these so-called chemtrails. He'd rather be called, you know, geoengineering or aerosol spraying. But aluminum, science has proven directly links to Alzheimer's or dementia. But one in two Americans, or I'm sorry, one in two people in the world will get dementia as of right now. And that's amazing. I mean... My mom died of a dementia and Alzheimer's. You know, that's crazy. The tuna population is down 97%. Respiratory in uh, the United States went from eighth to third, res- respiratory disease. And that, that is the, the part that silence becomes a betrayal. And news isn't reporting on this. All we have to do is walk outside, look up, and I guarantee you, one day a week, they're gonna trail your sky. I mean, everybody gets trailed at least once a week. And let this me, is getting insane. Let, let me just the, make it really clear what you were saying. The tuna population is down. 97% across the world. The tuna population? Yes. That's the oxygen and the oceans being depleted. Now, jellyfish is up tremendously. In China and Japan, they can't even fish without capturing so many jellyfish that they have to release them and then try to pick the fish out and then they go for it again. But the reason jellyfish is up is they can survive in a low oxygen environment. So that's telling us right there, oxygen's being depleted from our oceans all over the world. Mm, That's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yes, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And that's the I mean, silence. I was joking about the tuna thing because I thought it was funny. But no, did didn't. you? <laughs> well, I mean, it, uh, it's just, it's getting out of hand that I don't think the earth can recover from this now, is what Dane Wigington is saying. It might be too late already. 80% of the top, or I'm sorry, yes, 80% of the top scientists will tell you that if they keep spraying at this rate, civilization will be gone from this earth by 2040. Okay, and Patricia, you had something to add to that. Well, I just wanted to say, for those who are not familiar with Dane Wigington, he he runs, uh, well, he's the lead guy anyway, at geoengineeringwatch.org, and he's been the guy who's been looking into HARP, H-A-A-R-P, and like the chemtrails as well. And he was into solar panels, solar energy, and that sort of thing before he got into looking at what what they're spraying in the skies. Now, I believe that his thoughts are that global warming is what is being caught is is what some of these uh, aside from poisoning the oceans and the land (laughs) that global warming is also happening. So. A lot of people that are involved in flat earth and even not involved in flat earth don't believe that there really is global warming. So I did want to throw that in there. Right. To not have this be a one-sided discussion, to have both viewpoints represented. I don't have the stats on the tuna population. Of course, I'm going to take your word for it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when any any time species go extinct... You know, okay, uh, wait, wait, not to cut everybody off, but there was a... a, uh, uh, You see a lot of news reports of birds dying in the sky. Mm -hmm. Right. Like literally mass bird deaths. Yeah, thousands at once. Dolphins breaching themselves, whales. Right. Now, is it tied into chemtrails? Is it something else? We don't Dane really Wigington know. Dane is tying it into chemtrails. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know how he comes to this conclusion, but where and when on Earth can you all of a sudden see a thousand birds drop out of the sky in one place? For what reason is this happening? I mean, and the poisons that they're spraying, I mean... Okay, so it, sh- it, it should be tested, shouldn't it? I mean, who have they tested this stuff on? What if my son's allergic to aluminum? I mean, th- do they care? 
why are they spraying this? This is crazy. Okay. Yeah, there has yeah. to be some kind of testing going on. And... Yeah, right. We're the, we are the guinea pigs. Yeah, that's we are the guinea pigs. Yeah. That, that's, that's what it comes to. And as Mark and Patricia, you know this as well as anybody. B.O.B. come out about Flat Earth. Uh, who else? Uh, Tila Tequila. Yeah, but here's all... the thing. He's coming out about a lot more than just the Flat Earth now. Right. I mean, he's I starting to come out with about all kinds of stuff. But Mark Sargent right. was saying that, that it might be a publicity thing, too. Well, if if one more person, let's just say Morgan Freeman, stepped out about Flat Earth, you know what that would do for Flat Earth? Oh, oh yeah, that God. would be huge. It would explode. Well, we but love all, Morgan all, all, geoengineer, all geoengineering needs is one prominent person. Someone, imagine this. If Bruce Jenner, then his daughter, Kaylee, already, I do believe she tweeted about chemtrails. The door's already open for him. All he has to do is recognize geoengineering. Well, wait, wait, wait a second. So, okay, Mark Sargent, I have a question for you because I'm sure that you've already seen this. Actually, Patricia, I can ask you too. I don't know if mm-hmm. you've seen uh, Prince's come out in the open about chemtrails. Really? Yes, he has. I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I dug that little tidbit diamond out in the rough, and it's literally him. Right. And he knows how serious this is. People aren't being told the truth here. This is this is the most <laughs> important thing in our lives. So I Yeah, mean, but no, my point really my point with it all is, is you guys were talking about a third person coming out, but one already did, and that was Prince. Oh, well, you know, Prince, that's right. It was back... It was back maybe in 2010 or so. He did it on some kind of talk show. Yeah, right. it was a while back. Right. The reason that I was. said right. Bruce, I thought you meant recently, and I'm like, oh, really? That would be even who's cooler. In public, who's in the public eye more than anybody right now? The Kardashians. And Kaylee, I think Kylie. Kylie Kardashian has tweeted about it. That's what I'm saying. The door's already open for her dad. All he has to do is look up and recognize geoengineering, and it will flood the world. People will start looking up. That's all you have to do. I looked at my neighbor and I go, look at the chemtrails. They thought I was crazy. Let's see. My question is, what I'd like to know is how, how I want to know if they're masking something in the sky. The I think why- like everything else the government does, there are multiple reasons Many levels to what they do. It's not just to accomplish one thing. It's many right. things. Uh, okay. Weather manipulation, well, solar management. So, okay, oh, listen. Oh. I Hold on, hold on, hold. Slow okay, down, Tiger. Sorry. You're going on, boy. <laughs> I'm not a big slow believer down. in the global yeah, warming chemtrails connection. So I have okay. to. I so, already said that, but I'll say We it get again. a lot of chemtrails out here. I see them but they were all playing the tic-tac-toe time, tic-tac-toe every today. day. They were playing tic-tac-toe today. Right. There's two, or there's maybe... Nothing is happening at all, and all these things. I'm playing the devil's advocate. Right. All these things are caught. These die-offs and poisons in the ground are caused by something else, and the chemtrails are only just something f- as a distraction, so that we point our fingers and look up when we should be looking elsewhere. Just think about it. Possible. Right. That's true. Know. Right. Raytheon and Lockheed Martin have Wall Street derivatives on weather. Let's all right, when well, rockets like SpaceX <laughs> shoot just... off these days, I don't believe those are real launches like they used to be in the past when we had like the 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 the, the shuttle go up. Uh, these days, I think that those launches that happened like at Cape Canaveral or the recent SpaceX thing, I think those are actually projections, not even real rockets launching up in the air. Okay, so what... so maybe the spraying is to create some kind of a screen for that. It's a crazy high idea, but. I mean, high like as in on drugs high to some people. But uh, there's, I think all of these things are worth exploring, definitely. Right. So, Mark, Mark's MQ, what do you think on the geoengineering is the chemtrail stuff that you're seeing in the sky? Um, I don't know what to believe on those chemtrails, but I know the government has something to do with it. Um, you know, the chemtrails... I see them all the time, so I see them crisscross, crisscross, and since Brian has brought it to my attention, I watch it every day. I mean, I'm out there looking me for, for it. that. <laughs> it's all your fault. Yeah, it's all your fault, Brian. Wait, no, wait, I don't blame him, wait, but wait, I wait. he actually brought my to my attention. Sergeant, look at I'm, all these Kim trails. So I've been watching them. Yeah, I want to know what you think. Do you think it's something to do with flat Earth, Sergeant? What the geo geoengineering the the ca- the Contrails, chemtrails. Yes. The uh, maybe, maybe uh, it's. I don't know. Well, it blankets though. the sky in a haze. 
Yeah, it does. But are we doing it over every square meter of sky everywhere, not just populated areas? Because uh, if you're talking, I mean, if you can see chem, you know, chemtrails in uh, over the islands of Bali, then you might you might have something. I just don't. I just don't know yet. I mean, I know there's something up there. Do I believe them? Yes, I do. Have you looked uh, into it? At yeah, all yet? yeah, I have. But it, it seems it's inconclusive as far as it, there could be a lot of different things happening. Is it tied to the flat Earth? Eh, maybe. But I don't know. I mean, the flat Earth's been around for a while, and I I just don't know what the purpose would be right now. But I think it's functioning on multiple levels. So, I I wish I could give you more, but I, I can't. Well, what about it changing I... the weather? You know, on the maybe, but if it's an enclosed system, there'll be automated systems in place to to compensate for it. Like, uh, no different than an air conditioner in a car. You can you know you can burn a whole bunch of candles inside the car, and you know the air conditioner will compensate, and we'll try to balance the system out. So you know, it could be something on the on those on the, on that end. I I just don't know. Uh, chemtrails is not unfortunately I'm not I'm not trying to downplay it in any way, but it's not high on my list of uh, things that I look at when it comes to flat Earth. Sounds like they're trying to cover the sky for some reason. I mean, so maybe, many people maybe. have cameras and stuff like that, and now they're all high definition. So I figured maybe it had something to do with it. But yeah. I figured I'd ask the best, right? Well, <laughs> I'm afraid we don't know everything about everything. Wait, just, you oh, don't? Just, Wait, what? Just, Brian just, no, just most things. <laughs> okay. All right, Christina, what do you think on the chemtrail? Um, I think there's a lot of different possibilities, like you guys already brought up. I think it could be covering the sky, or it could be, you know, some kind of poisoning going on. But I'm not too sure about that. I don't know if they would be trying to poison everyone, not yeah. in, on intention. They've got kids anyway. too, so why would they want to kill their own children? Yeah, exactly. That seems a little far fetched to me. But you know, I it's, think I think it's more of like a, a weather control kind of thing. But I mean. If you're looking at it from a flat Earth perspective, I can see where Mark is coming from. So it's kind of all up in the air at this moment in time. Man, you know what, Mark? I, I thought I had something, and I thought I was like, ah, oh, look at this. But no, you guys all have to bat it down. Well, I mean, you got to remember <laughs> just, why. You got to remember why, like even nerve gas. Forget about biologicals. Even nerve gas isn't really used in any major conflicts, and that is because you, you can't trust the weather. And if it shifts, you, you're going to get hit with it too. So if you're spraying something up there, boy, I hope you're giving the, the right people the antidote. So you necessarily don't. So okay. So basically, let's 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 sum it up. So Mark Sargent, you don't necessarily it has anything to do with flat Earth because it's it's too unpredictable at this point in time. Yeah, there just isn't enough information. We, we don't see people drop, drop it in the streets, and it's not like it's you, when they spray it, you can't see the sun or the moon entirely or the stars. I, I just don't I just don't know. And Doug Clevenger thinks that everyone's going to die. And, no. Uh, oh, no. I think it's weather warfare. I think they're controlling the rain. That's and, what I believe. And Patricia? I think it's many, many different things. I don't think they're actually literally poisoning us with like a poison gas but I think it's many different things um, and I think some of them have to do with hiding things from us as well as weather manipulation but I again don't believe in global warming MK yeah I, yeah, I think that uh, you know the uh, it's you stopped him uh, yeah you stopped <laughs> stopped me and startled me is what you did <laughs> Um, See, the, the and, and about the, you know, the chemtrails, and I don't really think the government government wants to kill us because they need our tax money and they want to keep us working. <laughs> ah, good point. Good point. So funny. And Christina. Yeah, like I said before, it's it's a mix of a bunch of different possibilities, and I think it uh, needs some further investigation. So the next question I have for any of the people in the comment section of YouTube is tell me what you think about the chemtrail issues and Flat Earth and what you guys think on it. And uh, you now, Patricia and Mark, that's where you are, and you guys are doing a mixer. Two mixers coming up, and I'll let Mark fill us in on the mixers. <laughs> the mixers, yeah. The, the, the social events are going to be in Houston and Seattle on the same day, April 22nd, which is coming up a week from tomorrow. It's Flat Earth Day, by the way. It it's is. actually Earth Day, but we're making it Flat Earth Day. That's right. We're taking it back. It's <laughs> Flat Earth Day. Uh, it's going to be at 6 p.m. local time, so 6 p.m. On, on the West Coast and in Houston, which is Central Time. 
And anyone that's out there, please look at our channels, either Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes or Mark K. Sargent. The trailers are on there and all the information you need. You can RSVP to each of us. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, yours is going to be at an Italian restaurant. Mine's going to be at a seafood restaurant. And uh, yeah, it, the first of, of their kind. And people have been asking for a while now. It's like, well, you know, we, is there anybody in my town? Is there anybody in my town? Well, now there were, you know, groups are forming. And these are two of the first formal ones. Okay, so Doug, you yes. have a YouTube channel as well. Tell us a little bit about your channel. I know you're doing the moon thing. Yeah, I've got uh, two nice telescopes, and I'm actually zooming in on the moon just like Crow 777 or CD and filming it, and it's pretty neat, man. I'm trying to capture the lunar wave. And what is the lunar wave? Because I'm sure there's we, a lot of people. That we don't, don't know what the lunar wave is, but it's pretty cool. It, it makes it look like the moon is in water. It's no. awesome. Mark, did you ever uh, hear anything about the lunar wave? Was it ever brought up to you? Sergeant. What are you kidding? Oh, I can never mind. In fact, I heard of the lunar wave, I, I think, probably from Mark Sargent before I even found Crow Triple Seven's channel. Yeah, I have, given, I, have, I have given Crow Triple Seven's channel a lot of activity over the last year. I, he, was, he was the guy, when I was looking for moon footage, I was the first one I, I saw, and it still is, in my opinion, the best footage that's really out there. I mean, yeah, there's some closer ones, but it's, it's very, very good, and so I, I refer to him every chance I get and say, look, you want to see some weird stuff about the moon, go to his channel and look up the lunar wave. Yeah, he's actually made the announcement that space is a liquid. Yeah, go figure. That's a big leap. that's a big leap for him, he is isn't not, it? He is I not know. a guy. I thought it was a big leap when he went against NASA and said, "Look, space isn't what we think it is." And yeah. to come out and say, "You know what? I think that space may be water." Ooh. I know that wow. was huge. Yeah, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is very interesting. But he's got he's got the, the footage to kind of back it up. It's weird. Yeah. And again, it's not that much different than what we're we're in now. The the soup that we're breathing right now is really just a thin version of water instead of uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Though yeah. it's uh, nitrogen and oxygen. It's, right, that makes sense. Hmm. Not, not that much different. Right. All right. So also, it could be plasma or any sort of other substance we don't even know that's got a watery quality we can't just right. say it's water and we can yeah. go you know, get a bottle and start drinking it you know it <laughs> it could be you know there's many things that we right. don't even have any concept of at all so yeah so as crazy as this is gonna be i guess uh i'm going to let all of you go because this is the only half hour show ever <laughs> <laughs> all right so mark Sargent, we love you thank you talk to you later buddy right. and uh patricia your show is awesome. We love you. Always. Thank you. And uh, thank all of you for letting me be on your show. It's been really fun. Of course. Yeah, I was talking. Yes, and then yeah. there's Doug, the bricklayer Doug. Doug's yeah. our new friend. Yeah, he, he supposed to say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> and, <laughs> goodbye. and I love you all too. And then goodbye. Mark and, Christina. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. All right, so here. yeah, yeah. Again, tell me what you guys think of geoengineering and the flat Earth. Take care, guys. Humana Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 